All right. We want to welcome all of you to um, Upper Room and Southern California Conference uh, special training. Um, uh, I was I was praying about it, and just as I was praying about you know how the Lord can help me help you know train the church and its leaders, Marco sends out an email to all the pastors saying, "Hey, everybody, all pastors, and, you know I'm here with the Literature Evangelism uh, Ministry, and we want to help you." And I was like. That's an answer to prayer. So I immediately contacted him. We got to talking. I shared with him some of the things that I would wanted to do with our church, um, special trainings and some Bible studies, because that was something that some people were sharing that they wanted to know how to do, and also how to share the faith. And um, everybody's like, oh, well, you know, that's something that the pastor does. I'm like, no, you guys can do it too. And, um, you know, Marco right here, Mr. Uh, Topete, I don't know, he'll introduce himself and kind of share like how he can be called, but um, you know, he trains people on how to do these things and make it very practical. So it was truly a blessing. Uh, Marco, thank you so much for answering God's call and just really just sending that, that email right at the time I was praying for it. So I'm truly blessed to have uh, you here. So thank you. I'm going to go ahead and turn the time over to Marco. Uh, the time is yours, brother. So feel free to you know, introduce yourself and just tell us how today is going to go. Yeah. Uh, so it's going to be a two-part series. Uh, so it'll take place uh, today, obviously, at 2 p.m. It's going to take place next Saturday as well in the afternoon at 2 p.m. Today's going to be more of an introduction of why even share. Like, really, like, maybe we should just let Pastor Tim, Pastor, uh, you know, uh, Kevin uh, do it. Why is it that I need to do it? So it's going to be more of an introduction as to uh, kind of the, the benefits of being able to uh, share your faith and, and why it's important for the individual Christian to actually share their faith. My name is Marco Topete. I've been involved with uh, literature ministries uh, since 2014. And after that, um, I've also been involved with working with local churches, uh, doing door-to-door -door work, uh, conducting Bible studies uh, from home to home. Um, also sharing seminars and and it's just been a wild ride of a of, of ministry alongside my wife lisa and um as mentioned earlier we just had a baby boy he's five months old um if he wakes up before this is over i'll introduce him to you guys as well um but every minute that he sleeps is kind of like sacred so <laughs> so we just let him do his thing uh but it's a pleasure uh to be with you guys i think this is the second time i've been with upper room fellowship I think I've made it, I might have shared a, a glow presentation last time I was with you guys, if I'm not too mistaken, not that long ago. Um, but yeah, I've also worked with uh, uh, Bible workers all year round, and we conduct trainings um, at, at local churches uh, on, on how to give Bible studies. So giving Bible studies, training people how to give Bible studies, and meeting the, the people in the community is kind of like a large part of what I do on a day in and day out basis. So um, yeah, uh, without further or, or, or do, I just wanna share with you guys um, a little bit of how I got started in sharing my faith, if, if that's okay. Um, it's, sh sharing is kind of, kind, kind of an interesting thing. I, oh, let me go ahead and share my, my screen with you guys just so that it can be uh, ready. And if you can just make me a co-host and we'll get right started. Okay, desktop two, share. Then we're gonna go ahead and play from, play from the start. Cool. That should be up in front of you guys, yeah? Awesome, awesome. So my journey of sharing my faith uh, definitely started way before um, I ever went to seminary way before I ever went to this little Bible college that I went to uh, when I was younger. Um, it, it really just started at my home church. It was at my local church. I had an encounter with Jesus that, that radically impacted me. And I was so excited um, to share about the person who had radically changed my life. And I'm sure that we all kind of resonate with that, right? Uh, when you try something new, taste something new that is just like crazy good uh one of the first inclinations we have is to is to share it with someone is to say hey you got to try this this spot out right i always talk about a uh, yard house i always tell all my friends if you like buffalo wings they got the best vegetarian buffalo wings at yard house but make sure that you go from monday through friday three 
to 6 p.m. because they're half off during happy hour, right? So anyways, that's a little plug in for you guys. If you guys like uh, buffalo wings and you're vegetarian, they have the best buffalo wings that you can possibly uh, have um, on this side of glory. So anyways, um, Christ had done something for me in a very personal way that radically impacted me, and I wanted to share it with people. So my journey of sharing my faith uh, really started um, at local church, and the local church is, is just an amazing place to start this journey, especially as you're with a body of believers, uh, a faith group, faith community, that, that it, it, it should be a place where, where you can nurture and you can develop and you can grow. Um, I remember I asked the pastor of my church, um, I was newly baptized, and I, and I noticed that there was this little room in back of the, uh, one of the hallways at the local church in San Jose, California. And I asked the pastor, I said, hey, what's in that room? He said, oh, it's our uh, outreach room where we keep our literature. And I said, can I go in there? And he said, yeah. So he went and opened it for me. And he was really supportive of me always and, and encouraging me. And I just saw stacks of books like Steps to Christ. I saw glow tracks. I saw all of these things. So I had an idea and I said, look, I'm going to grab my backpack and I'm just going to fill it. Right. I was going to the local um, the local college down the street at that time. And I was taking the city bus to it. So I thought to myself and I said, I'm just going to go ahead and fill my backpack with with literature. And as I as I'm going to school, if, if anyone looks at me, says something, sneezes, I don't know, I'm going to take one of these little pamphlets out and just hand it to them. So that's kind of my journey. My journey uh, definitely started at a local church with a desire to share Jesus. And I feel that that's it. That's that's the most basic thing that we can get out of this is that when we come in contact with our savior, then a heaven born desire will be birthed into us that would we would want to share something good that we uh, definitely have encountered. And it remind me, re reminds me of a quote found in Steps to Christ, page 78, which reads the following. No sooner does one come to Christ than there is born in his heart a desire to make known to others what a precious friend he has found in Jesus. The saving and sanctifying truth, what does it say? Cannot be shut up in his heart. And this is this this is this, this is how it all started. It all started with having an encounter with Christ, and my bones were burning. Where I wanted to share to share with someone, and I just want to make that um, simple appeal before we even get started. Have an encounter with Jesus. Just spend some time with Him. You know, it's it's hard to share about someone that that you are vaguely familiar with. It's difficult, but when you come to know that person in a personal way, it gets fairly easy to talk about that person. So when we're talking about making friends for eternity, we're talking about making friends, not just for the here and now, but making friends that will radically impact them and impact you to live with God for eternity and meet the very people that you introduce to Christ to. It's an incredible experience, friends. I used to be addicted uh, to a bunch of things. I mean, alcohol, drugs, all of the above. And I, I, I clearly remember how I felt whenever I would get high or get drunk or whatever the case may be. When Christ came into my life and, and touched my heart, and the first time I ever shared Christ with someone, I became addicted to that. And let me tell you something. It provides the most beautiful experience that nothing else's world could offer will give to you. When you see someone who did not know the truth come to have an experience with our Lord, there's just nothing like it. There's, I, there's nothing better. I was just, it was just last week that I was sitting in my living room uh, talking to a person. And as I was telling this person about God, and I was telling this person about the importance of reading the Bible, that when this person said, so is there like old and, and, um, and, and, and new testaments? Um, I heard that there's like 
two parts of the Bible. Oh, so you read like the whole thing? Like, did, does it all say the same thing or? Oh man, I literally had to hide my excitement because I didn't want to scare this person away. But just that opportunity to be able to share with someone God's beautiful truth about his word and about himself. I'm telling you, friends, when you embark on this journey, it will radically impact you. So we're going to have a word of prayer and we're going to dive right into an introduction of why share what's so important about making friends for eternity. And as we dive into, into this, um, this would be more of a discussion group as well. I, I definitely don't want just me to sit here and, and, and just to share, but I want to encourage, encourage all of us really that uh, to, to share and, and, um, and to just share what your experience is. I, I don't sit here as the only person that knows it all or, or that I have the way, uh, but I know that when we put our heads together, we definitely can uh, grow together. And if you feel comfortable enough, I do want to just encourage you to turn on your camera just so that we can uh, dialogue a little better. Sometimes it's funny. I was just talking to someone earlier and, and they said, how is it preaching on Zoom? Because I, I was preaching this morning for a different church service. And I was like, well, sometimes it's like preaching to a, uh, to a bunch of uh, cell phone models, if you know what I'm saying, right? It, it, sometimes it just says Apple iPhone X12 or whatever, you know, whatever. Okay, whatever. If you feel comfortable, I want to encourage you to just turn your camera on so that we can dialogue together and that it can feel a little bit more like church. Like if we were just hanging out at church and, and uh, getting to know one another as we discuss this important subject. So, Absolutely. Uh, Marco, really quick, um, just to hopefully maybe streamline some things. If you do have a question, please go ahead and put your, you say, I have a question in the chat or just give a thumbs up or raise your hand. And I'll call you out so that we don't have everybody unmuting and all of a sudden we just have a, you know, cacophony of people like, ah, you know. So if you have a question, go ahead, raise your hand, you know, put it in the chat and we'll call you in according, um, according manner. And if you have something that you want to share while, while Marco is uh, sharing, you know, I'm sure he'll see that as well in the chat. All right, everybody. Thank you. Awesome. Thank you so much for uh, bringing that up. Please utilize the chat. In fact, I'm putting the chat right here on my second screen just so i can make sure that i have a full uh full full uh, view of it so if you have a question or anything like that then definitely uh we can we can dialogue a little as as we continue so let's have a word of prayer and we're going to dive right into our presentation father in heaven i pray that you would just bless this time together with upper room fellowship uh, we are just so um excited to be able to talk about this to be able to dialogue about this to be able to learn about this and Father, I just pray that your Holy Spirit would be present. Ultimately, you are the biggest and greatest soul winner. So we definitely want to learn from you. In Jesus' name, amen. So we're going to first dive into and take a look at some reasons of why it's important to share our faith. And the first reason that we're going to be seeing is the fact that God, it's God's command to believers. So it's not necessarily Pastor Kevin saying, hey, I think this is a great idea, and I think we should do this, and I think this, and I think that. No, even though he might have been influenced to put this together, but it's really God's command. As a Christian, as a Seventh-day Adventist Christian, it is his command that we actually are able to do something um, to do something like this. So, for instance, in Matthew 28, verses 18 to 20, this is what the Bible says. And Jesus came up and spoke to them, saying, All authority has been given to me in heaven and on earth. Go, therefore, and make disciples of all the nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit, teaching them, uh, teaching them to observe all that I commanded you. And, lo, I am with you always, even to the end of this age. So when you read this verse, it's pretty evident that part of the commission that Jesus gave to the disciples is our commission too. It wasn't just them or it's not just our pastor or our leaders, but he was talking to people and you and I are the people today that he is speaking to through his word. And what I love about the great commission is the way it begins and the way it ends. Now, what do I mean? It begins by telling us all authority.
authority has been given to me in heaven and on earth. Friends, this soul winning business, this business of getting to know of how to lead and share and, 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 and glorify God by sharing him with others. How does it make you feel? And this is a question I want to ask you. So, so if you want to raise your hand or if you want to just put it in the chat saying, uh, put something in there so that we know that, that you're about to be unmuted. But how does it make you feel in terms of the context of sharing your faith when you know that all authority has been given to Jesus in heaven and on earth? How does it make you feel? Well, I'll go ahead and maybe start it off. Uh -huh. um, even as a pastor, um, it's still, you know, the feelings of my natural inclination is I, I, I still am like, okay, I'm going to share my faith and, 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 and uh, let people know who God is. And I sometimes get like, okay, butterflies. But then I when I remind myself, man, all authority is given to Jesus. It's like, okay, then I, then it gives me kind of that extra push. Like, okay, okay, let's, let's get going. Let's do this. Awesome. Awesome. Thank you, uh, Pastor Kevin. And Lindsay, I noticed that you did share. It makes me feel uh, secure in a way. So Lindsay, can you please share a, and elaborate on that? Why does it make you feel secure? Um, I guess it's because um, we have like this. Um, <laughs> well, I guess it's because Jesus is like somebody who makes me feel secure um just because he's uh you know our brother our um i guess you know somebody who protects us uh and because he came to have or because he came to earth um we have like this physical human connection with him so it's like the fact that he has the authority um of earth and heaven it's it just makes me feel more secure because i can lean on him and you know it's like this feeling of reassurance that you know he's watching over us and protecting us that's awesome thank you so much for sharing Lindsay. Uh, i appreciate that and you're right we do have a brother right we do have uh someone who came in in human flesh and knows us very intimately and knows um everything about us and here it is he's letting us know that all authority has been given to him it reminds me of a story when i was in middle school um, where, and when I was in sixth grade, I had, um, all the eighth graders wanted to beat me up at one point, right? I went to this little east side ghetto high, uh, uh, LM, uh, middle school and, and all, I was, you know, I, I don't look scary. At least I don't think I look scary. And I looked even less scary when I was younger and I've always been kind of scrawny and, you know, but, but all the eighth graders wanted to beat me up and I was terrified because they would curse me out when I would walk by them, they would stare at me and, what ended up happening was um, I didn't want to go to school anymore because I really felt like they were going to beat me up. And uh, one morning uh, I was getting up and I told my brother that I did not want to go to school. Now, my older brother um, was someone that everybody was afraid of in the neighborhood. You know, he was your typical goatee having bald headed Mexican dude. And everybody was just they knew not to mess with him. And I told my brother and I said, hey, uh, I don't want to go to school because all the eighth graders are 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 uh, threatening me. They're telling me they're going to beat me up. And my brother told me, he said, Marco, if anybody touches you, just let me know. Something happened with those words. But when I went to school that day, I was literally, I no longer was looking for the, for, for the long way to the PE class. I would walk right through them. Because in my mind, I knew that if anyone dared touch me, I just had to tell my brother. And uh, for a lack of a, uh, more words, he, he was someone that actually meant it. So I felt secure. I had my older brother, my earthly brother, that, that told me that if anything happened to me, that he would pay retribution. Now, I'm not saying to do this, but what I am saying is we have a heavenly brother that tells us all authority has been given to him on earth and on heaven. And he finished it with the second thing is he finishes it by saying, lo, I am with you always.
So when you're thinking and you have this desire to share your faith and to reach out to maybe a neighbor, a friend, a relative, a stranger, it's important to understand that it's not just you there, but that it's Christ, not just even with you, but through you sharing about himself to someone. When you think about that, it really just builds confidence in what you are doing for God. In fact, it goes on to tell us under God's command to believers in Psalms 96, verse 2 and 3, where he says, sing to the Lord, bless his name, proclaim good tidings of his salvation from day to day, tell of his glory among the nations, his wonderful deeds among all the peoples. So my question to you guys today right now, and I think the more we dialogue will be the better. Um, my question to you is, how do you see God's command to share your faith in Psalms 96 verses 2 and 3? Who would like to be the first one to share? Lindsay, thank you so much for getting us started and Pastor Kevin. But who else would like to share? How do you see God's command to share your faith here in Psalms 96? Well, going back to the previous text, Matthew, um, you know, it feels, I feel responsible um, because the first part and the last part is okay, but the middle section, you have to go and make disciples of all nations and baptize them. You know, I feel that's a burden because how do I do that? And um, it sounds so massive, big you know, responsibility that we have to carry out. Thank you. Thank you so much. And uh, I think this is why this is helpful, right? Being together today and also being together next Sabbath afternoon. Uh, hopefully, I don't think that we can really exhaust this in, in, in a couple of hours, but hopefully uh, this would give us a little bit of courage and strength to do something um, even if it's starting with just one simple thing. So thank you so much for sharing. Um, would anyone else like to share? How do you see uh, God's commission here in Psalms 96, verse 2 and 3? When I, was, when I, when I would canvas... Um, and I would uh, close on, on the books I had in front of me, there was a golden rule that after you gave the close, you just stayed silent until the first person spoke. So I say that to let you know that I'm not afraid of silence. But if you would like dinner sooner than later, I think it would help uh, to interact a little more. <laughs> so how do you see the Gospel Commission here in, in Psalms 96? <laughs> Maybe one more person, and then we'll move on to the next slide. Yeah, hi. hi. This is Steve. Steve. Um, uh, you know, we talked about this in Sabbath School today. Uh, hang on a second. We talked about this in Sabbath School today that, uh, that you know, <laughs> It's important to celebrate the fact that we're saved and that the gospel is in our life. And if you truly believe and have a confidence uh, that you are a children, a child of God, then you should. That will give you, with the help, the help of the Holy Spirit, uh, the ability to be bold. And I think that opportunities to share our faith and God's love is what we're built for. That's what God created us to be to help glorify him, uh, shine a light to others. And so uh, I think it starts with knowing that you're a child of God, having confidence in that, and then boldly going out to share that love. Thank you. Thank you so much. And you do see that in this verse, right? Sing to the Lord, bless his name. Why is this person singing and blessing the name of the Lord? I'm sure it's because they have had a unique experience with the Lord of Lords proclaim good tidings of his salvation from day to day, tell of his glory among the nations, his wonderful deeds among all the peoples. The psalmist here understood that when, and going back to that, 
quote from Steps to Christ that I shared with you in the beginning, when one has an encounter with Jesus, even if you don't know how, right, our, our, our sister uh, shared how she feels the burden, she feels the burden, but doesn't necessarily know how to, 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 to materialize that burden. That burden, um, it, it, it was never meant to be a heavy burden. It was meant to be a joyful burden. So I'm glad that you feel that burden, sister, because what that tells me is that you have come to know Jesus and you know that you have a responsibility because of the goodness of that Christ that you have met to want to share him with others. The first reason why it's important for Christians to share their faith is simply because it's just God's command. God's command to all believers, me, you included, and it looks different for all believers. I had a young lady who called me, uh, called my office and, 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 and was sharing how she was so grateful because she is so timid. She doesn't like talking to strangers. She's very timid, doesn't like uh, necessarily being in uh, the center of attention. But she said that when she heard a GLOW presentation, she finally saw how she can proclaim the good news in her skin. She can share literature in a way that she doesn't necessarily need to go in front of people or to expose herself too much. And she was so happy on the phone because of literature. She said, I've been super shy. I want to do something for God, but I don't know how. And finally, I know a way where I can share hope even in my own skin. The second reason why it's important to share our faith is because we gain more than we give. Have you ever noticed that, friends? Maybe you uh, participated in, in a uh, as a volunteer somewhere. You served someone. You weren't being paid. You, 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 you didn't have to be there, but you chose to be there anyway. We gain more than we give when we share our faith. In Proverbs 11.25, uh, the, the word of God tells us the generous man will be prosperous and he who waters, what does it say friends? He who waters will be watered himself. How many of you guys want to be watered? You guys want a, a refreshing experience, right? We must water. If we want to be watered, we must water. It's kind of interesting how that works. In, in fact, it's it, it, it really is divinely birthed and born because how is it that as we give, we actually receive? It goes contrary to all of human law. Normally, you want to receive, 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 and, and gain, gain, gain. But what God is telling us through his Bible is that if we give, then we'll get I've experienced this time and time again. I, I there, there was there, there's been moments where I've been extremely tired and 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 an opportunity arises and I don't want to go. I mean, I think we've all been there, right? Don't want to go. I don't even want to see the pastor in the eye today because he might invite me to 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 go to to feed the homeless or to do this or to do that, and I'm gonna just go home. And somehow, some way, you end up in the car following the pastor or following the, the ministry leader. And somehow, some way, you end up uh, volunteering at whatever thing the church was doing. And somehow, some way, you make it through. And by the time you're done, you realize you're not even sleepy anymore. Because you watered. And since you watered, you yourself were watered. Friends, there are in our churches and maybe in this very room, some very dry and parched Christians. You haven't watered anything. You haven't made yourself available for anything. Somehow in America, we've gotten to a point in our churches where oftentimes we think that the reason I go to church, the reason I enter into these Zoom meetings or whatever the case may be, is just to receive. When in reality, God calls us into the faith to give. Interesting, right? I remember I was at a church and I was asked to translate the message in Sp into Spanish for the Spanish believers. And for anyone who knows me, um, I do know Spanish, but not well enough to translate. And 
uh, it's, it's very difficult to translate for any of you guys who have ever had to translate a message. It's very difficult. I mean, I, I sweat more translating than playing football. It's incredible. And so when I would, when they came and asked me, Marco, can you please translate? You know, what was the first thing I responded. Oh, uh, I can't today. <laughs> I didn't want to. And then she said, Oh, don't worry. Don't worry. It's fine. And then she got up and walked out. And I was sitting there and I'm, you know, I'm trying to get my blessing. I mean, I understand the service. That's already a, a head start, right? And I'm trying to sit there and receive my blessing. And I just felt the prompting of the Holy Spirit saying, Mark, church is about giving, not just receiving. And I got up and I dragged my feet all the way to the back of the church. And I said, I'll translate today. And I was taken to the little room and given my little headset. You know, I'm not sitting next to my wife anymore. And now I'm just there and in the, in the corner of a little tiny room and, and I'm translating the message. And it was interesting. But by the time that it was all done and I was walking out, there was only, there was only, I think, two saints that spoke Spanish. And one, one of the older saints walked up to me, shook my hand, and she said, I'm so thankful I was able to hear the word of God today. And I was, ref I, I felt like a five gallon jug of water just just came over me. I was refreshed by that experience. So here, the second reason why it's important to share our faith is because we gain more than we actually give. Oh, by the way, just curious, has anyone had this experience before, friends? Anyone would like to share maybe very quickly uh, a short story on how you were uh, watered as you watered, some, as you watered? Would anyone like to share a quick story? Anyone, anyone? It's okay if not. Maybe we need to do more watering in this group, amen? <laughs> so the first point I, I uh, sharing with you was it's God's command. It's God's command, plain and simple. The second point that I shared with you is we actually gain more than we give. And the last point that I want to share with you is we learn best when we share. Edgar Dale uh, was an American educator, and he developed a theory called the cone of experience. And I'm sure that you've probably heard, his, heard about uh, his, his research in one way, shape, or form because it's very popular. But this is what he said. Uh, this is what he shared. He said, he said, we remember 10% of what we read. Any of you guys readers out there? You guys like to read? 10%. He said, we remember 10% of what we read, 20% of what we hear, 30% of what we see, 50% of what we see and hear, 70% of what we discuss with others, 80% of what we personally experience, and 95% of what we teach others. The reason why it's important to share our faith is because we learn best when we share. I went to a Bible college, I sat in classes, and I learned, but it wasn't until I started giving Bible studies that I actually understood. It was funny because I gave a study on the book of, I think it was Daniel chapter 7, and I gave a Bible study on Daniel chapter 7, personal Bible study, one-on-one, -on -one. and during that Bible study, some lights just came on and I understood some of, of, of that chapter better than I ever have before. And I called my Daniel and Revelation teacher and I told him, I finally understand this chapter. And he was like, uh, I thought I did a good job in class, <laughs> you know, but I was like, you don't get it. I did. I had a Bible study on down chapter seven and I finally understand a little better that chapter. So I want to encourage us. The reason why it's important to uh, give and to share our faith is because you and I are actually going to be benefited most in terms of knowing it and really experiencing what the Bible teaching is all about. When we share, friends, we learn best. So that's the third reason of why we should share our faith. 
So there are different methods of sharing our faith. Uh, Bible studies is what we're going to be honing on uh, during this short seminar. But there are different methods of sharing our faith. And I want to uh, share with you guys just a few different methods. The number one most powerful way I feel that, that, that has the most dramatic impact is living the faith. I'm taking a marriage in the family class at Andrews Seminary right now, and Dr. Reggio shared the following, your godly marriage has a bigger impact than your godly preaching. How many of you guys are married today? Anyone married? Your godly marriage has a bigger impact than your godly preaching. So when we live the principles of scripture by the grace and power of the holy spirit it's a witness as to the power of what we're living it's a witness i've had people that used to know me before i met jesus ask me questions about the bible just because uh, of what they visibly see that is different in me so one of the most uh, important and critical methods of sharing our faith, friends, it's being surrendered daily to the Holy Ghost. Inviting him into your experience. And when you have that, that, that motivation, when you have that power that's working in you, it does something special to your walk. And I feel it's the most important method of sharing your faith is, is to actually live what you believe. The second method is glow tracks. I told you the testimony about that young lady who is super timid, doesn't like talking to strangers. Um, she called and she was excited because glow tracks gave her an avenue to be able to share her faith in a way that she was comfortable in her own skin. And I think even now through the pandemic, glow tracks have really taken off because glow tracks, now you can share your faith without even talking to someone by just leaving a glow track on someone's front door or on someone's uh, desk at work or uh, in, in a classroom at school. It's, it's, it's really uh, taken on a, um, a, a, beautiful, uh, a beautiful method. Another one is personal testimony. Before I went to seminary, before I uh, went to a Bible college or anything like that, I, I literally just started by sharing what God had done for me. And you, maybe you don't know how to give Bible studies. Maybe you don't know how to preach from a pulpit. Maybe you don't want to go on a subway. I have a crazy friend who would go on subways in Philadelphia and just start preaching out loud. Can you imagine that? <laughs> and maybe you don't want to do that. But you can share your story. You know what Christ has done for you. You know what, what Jesus means to you. So we're going to just practice this real quick in the chat. I want to encourage you. Write one sentence of, of why you follow Jesus. Write one sentence of why you follow Jesus. I'll, I'll give you guys 30 seconds. Write one sentence of why you follow Jesus, why you love Jesus. One sentence only, not a paragraph. I know it's hard to contain it within one sentence, but we're, we're just tried for, for this practice. And if anybody well, I have to give you, I have to give you a thesis paper. <laughs> oh, Bond, Bond, well, don't you worry about it. And if you don't want to write it in the chat, and if you're bold enough, you can actually just say it out loud. You can unmute yourself and give me one sentence of why you love Jesus. And I think we'll start with you, Bond. I love Jesus because he has the truth. Because he has the truth, right? Thank you. Thank you so much for participating. Uh, Timothy Yan says, because he first, uh, because he loved me first. Pastor Kevin said, I follow Jesus because he loves me a sinner. Anyone else would like to share? Um, you could unmute yourself and just share out loud. Or you can write it in the chat. Matthew Belenio said, because I can't see any other way. That's powerful. Very, very powerful because he has given himself for us. Powerful. We all have a story of why we love Jesus, don't we? And I, um, 
one of the most successful methods of sharing your faith is just your personal testimony. I think of uh, the, the demoniac who was in his right mind, who wanted to leave with, with Jesus when he was here on earth. And he said, no, 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 go back and tell him what I have done. Friends, he just had an encounter with Christ. He didn't have any experience or he was an Adventist for 20 years and all that stuff. He just had an encounter with Christ. But because of him sharing his personal testimony, he led many uh, to Jesus. When Jesus came back, there were many who were ready to receive the gospel. So don't underestimate your personal story. Another method is family worship. Family worship is so important. And um, oftentimes we don't think about this as a method of sharing our faith. But I want to share with you, friends, family worship is critical in sharing your faith because in family worship, it gives you an audience. It gives you an opportunity of a safe place to be able to start to share um, your faith, to be able to start to share Jesus with your family members. I feel that as we uh, practice family worship at home, it will become easier to share our faith uh, when we're out of the home. And we have local church outreach opportunities. This is another method of sharing your faith. I recently, I recently uh, participated in a food pantry about maybe a month ago. And it was here in our conference. And when I went to this food pantry, it was incredible. They, they see about three to 500 families every Wednesday. Apparently, they've been doing it for a very long time, and they have a really good system. Three to 500 families from the community come to this food pantry every single Wednesday. And when I received a phone call asking if I can come by to check out what they were doing, um, I went on a Wednesday night. They started around, I think, 6 p.m. And it I had a park way down the block because of how full the Seventh-day Adventist church was. 500 people I saw that day come through the food pantry. And I was part with the group that went to every single window of those cars and just greeted them. Hi, thank you so much for, for joining us today. And we would give uh, a little uh, uh, a welcome card with a glow track. That's all. And we would pray with people if they were comfortable to do so. So why am I sharing this story? Because after the outreach happened, when I talked to the leader, I said, what, is, what has been one of your most difficult challenges? And they shared, my most difficult challenge is to have people to help. And I said, oh, really? Uh, it doesn't seem like a small church. It looks like a bigger church. And they said, yeah, about... Uh, you know, maybe two to 400 people are there when COVID's not around every, every Sabbath morning. And I said, oh my, okay. So, you know, you have about maybe, let's just say 300 church members that are consistently going to church every weekend, but you only have about maybe nine to 10 people helping out on Wednesday. Oftentimes, we don't need to look too far to find someone to share our faith with. We just need to be willing and open to participate in what's already happening at our churches. So it is important that we don't look too far, but that we ask ourselves, what is going on near me? What is going on in Upper Room Fellowship? What is going on in my neighborhood? What is going on within my family that gives me the opportunity to be able to share my faith? Social media posts right now has been another method of sharing our faith. Uh, there's been people who, uh, who started to post uh, either a devotional thought or even just sharing a Bible verse that they've read. Rose, I just read yours, I am loved. I was in a fatal car accident. My life was spared because my mission to share his love is not done. Praise God for that testimony, Rose. I really do believe that God has a special purpose for you. Definitely, definitely has a special purpose for you. Thank you for sharing. So social media has been another method of sharing our faith and Bible studies, definitely, uh, which we'll be honing in on a little bit more. Um, Bible studies, either personal or through a group, 
is another method of sharing our faith. So how do we find interest for Bible study leads or Bible study contacts? Before we get into that slide, I do want to um, share, uh, just give an opportunity for you guys to respond. I shared just a few, a few methods of sharing your faith. Um, what's a method that you have found to be able to share your faith that works for you? I want to just leave this room. Maybe we can take a minute or two and just hear, hear, hear from you. What are some things that you have done that, that has helped you share your faith? Would anyone like to share? You could unmute yourself and just share. Anyone, anyone? Um, I mainly um, I mainly share with my kids um, and um, homeless feeding and um, Sabbath school, afternoon Bible study, but that's about it. And I feel like I need to do more, more. And, you know, that's why I'm burdened. I feel like I have to go out into the world and just, you know, tell the world that he's coming and we should be ready. But I find myself not doing enough. Mm -hmm. hmm. Well, I definitely want to thank you for sharing. And I definitely want to thank you. Uh, I, I think you hit on some really good ones, uh, sharing with your kids, uh, which kind of falls under family worship, right? Uh, being able to share with your family and being comfortable to share with your family. And um, and homeless feedings that you mentioned, definitely a wonderful opportunity to be able to share your faith. So thank you for sharing, sharing that example. Would anyone else like to share a little bit of, of how a method of how you share your faith? Anyone, anyone? I don't want to skip anyone. Hi, this is Karen. So definitely uh, one way is um, is through family worship. When I talk to our girls, I um, when we go over whatever lessons we're talking about, then I feel like I get like new insights that I didn't think about before by just talking about it. So reading something on your own versus when you actually discuss or tell somebody else about it, it really gives you new insight. So that's why I like, I mean, it's a lot of work, but teaching Sabbath school, yes. teaching the younger kids, it, it just makes you just, as you're even preparing or even discussing it at the time, you, you know that's the Holy Spirit giving you new insights, not yes. just for the kids, but for yourself. So teaching, um, also like, for example, when you hear a good sermon and sharing that sermon with somebody else, it's like when you, um, it's like learning and, and reteaching it to somebody else. Mm -hmm. You start to sort of, it embeds the message more deeper and you remember it better. And it, like, again, you find new insights. So I think it's um, just basically talking, sharing mm -hmm. whatever you've learned, either through worship, through devotional or through the sermon, just talking about it again to somebody else just not only blesses that person but also for yourself as well awesome awesome i think you hit on a lot of points that we were we've been discussing so it's it's super cool uh, just to see it in real life right being played out as you share you learn new insights um that i think that was super key so thank you thank you so much for sharing would anyone else like to share how, how do you share your faith a method maybe that you have found that works for you I think one of the ones that uh, that I definitely have been doing recently is um, is I'm getting a lot of credit card offers right now for some strange reason. So I know I mentioned this in my Glow presentation last time I shared with you guys, but I always take out the uh, the the free postage already already postage um, envelope inside of the credit card offer, and I just put Glow Tracks in there, close it, and I put it back in my mailbox, and that's how I share my faith sometimes. So. I guess what I'm trying to share is there's more than one ways to share your faith. 
You know, it's it's not just personal Bible studies, or it's not just literature, or it's not just homeless feedings, or just pantry, but God uh, can use us as we give him uh, what we have. And uh, I definitely, definitely, there's many different ways to share your faith. So how is it that we can find people if we wanted to be a little bit more aggressive uh, to, to find interest for our personal Bible studies? Um, and this one, we're going to hone in specifically on, on like Bible studies. Like if we had that burden to share uh, our faith through personal Bible studies, how is it that, that we can find people? One of the uh, closest, one of the, the areas that I think that we ought to start praying for is close friends. Uh, these are people that trust you already. These are people that know you. Um, these are people that, that you come in contact with either, uh, some, either frequently or infrequently. But, by, but close friends is a wonderful place to start sharing your faith. Um, I remember I, I text some of my closest friends and uh, I told them that I wanted to introduce them to someone. And I told them that, I, that my two promises that I gave them was A, um, I won't tell you how to live, what not to do or what to do. And B, uh, there won't be any church people there because they knew that I was a Christian. And I said, there won't be any church people there. And, and why do I say it like that? Well, because sometimes people just don't trust other people they don't know. So I, I pray to God and I said, Lord, I really pray that you bring me at least one or two. And it really shows where my faith was at at that time. Uh, but the very first Friday at, at 6 p.m., um, uh, about 12 friends came over. And, and I, I didn't even know what to do. Um, you know, this is never had any training, never, no one ever told me how to do anything. I just sat down with my Bible and opened up to the book of Matthew. And I just started to, to, to read from scripture with them. And it was powerful. They came the next Friday, they came the next Friday. And finally, uh, one friend walked up to me and he goes, I don't think I'm gonna be able to make it anymore. And I said, why? He said, cause I, I, it's hard for me to come here and then to go to the strip club. And that was like, Hey, I told you that I would not tell you what to do, what not to do. If you feel that impression, I feel that God is calling you. And, and he, he has a special plan for you. And it was, it was powerful. It was powerful what happened. Two of them ended up getting baptized. So starting with our friends, people that know us, people that, that, that trust us, that are comfortable with us, um, that to start praying about um, a list, something that, that I have done in the past is I make a list of, of friends that, that, that have not surrendered their hearts to Christ. And I just start praying for them. And I ask God to lead me uh, to a favorable uh, opportunity where I'm able to share my faith with them. Um, another one is Facebook market. Facebook market is usually used to sell things on Facebook. It's kind of like a offer up. I'm not sure if you guys are familiar with offer up. Offer up has become like my best friend. Uh, my wife just laughs because of how much I'm on there and, and, and so forth, but I always get all my stuff off offer up. And so Facebook market is, um, you can make like a simple, a simple uh, post on Facebook market. And it works because usually not only can your friends see it, but also people in your area can see it. And you can set up a, a simple little post saying, saying how uh, due to the nature of the pandemic, you wanted to be there for your community and are offering uh, free Bible studies, you know, if anyone is interested, um, they could be over the phone, they could be on Zoom, um, or if you're comfortable, you can meet socially distanced at a park, um, you know, so you can get creative in ways where you can find people to study the Bible with. Uh, we ran a Facebook market ad in Tahunga, Southern Tahunga area, and uh, we were really surprised on how many people started to text us and started to uh, email us and, and tell us through Messenger, through Facebook Messenger, that they wanted to study the Bible. I had the privilege of giving one of those Bible studies. It was in in uh, Pasadena, Pasadena, California with Rob. And we met him through Facebook Market. He was just on Facebook and saw that people were offering Bible studies. And, and uh, we ended up studying the Bible with them. So it was just a really neat opportunity. So using social media definitely can help you find people. Um, uh, neighbors as well, people that we live close to. Um, you can start doing uh, simple little things such as, uh, I know for Christmas when, when I lived in Tahunga, uh, I would always give a, a, a book that was nicely wrapped with, with a bow for Christmas. I would always give a book uh, as a gift to my neighbors. And basically I just use that as a, as a way to like talk to them 
and, and, and so forth. So uh, finding excuses to talk to your neighbors, I think is really important, especially if you don't have Adventist neighbors. Um, my wife, she loves to bake. So she, uh, whenever she would make anything for the house, I would always, um, uh, if she made cookies, I would always put cookies in a sandwich bag and just knock on their door and, and, and share the cookies with my neighbors. Um, I know that right now things are a little sensitive because of COVID. So maybe uh, packaging them and, and making sure you're well covered when you go and share uh, with your neighbors. But I think even now more than ever, friends, uh, people are yearning uh, to, be, to, to have social contact uh, with another uh, human because of how uh, segregated uh, we definitely have been. And uh, I think uh, we went over that already. Coworkers is, is super important too. Uh, people you work with, people that you see on a, on a day-to-day base, uh, pray for your coworkers. Pray that God would lead you to be able to meet a coworker that's in need and to be able to start Bible studies. There was a coworker of mine one day before I got into the ministry. Uh, she was, I noticed that she was crying when she came out of her office and I gently approached her and I said, I noticed that you were crying. Um, is everything okay? And when she shared with me what was going on, I, I said, you know, I'm a Christian. Um, and if you feel comfortable, I would like to pray uh, uh, for what you're going through. And she allowed me. And one thing led to another. And she was at our Wednesday night prayer meeting at our local church. So just being sensitive to who's around you and what's around you definitely is an advantage. And uh, the local church actually can register. I'm not sure if this is already the case, but the local church can register with amazing facts. It is written in Voice of Prophecy, and you can contact them directly and saying, I would like to register my church to receive leads for people who request Bible studies that are in my area. And what they do is they then, uh, whenever you get a lead, whenever they get a request for Bible studies through their network, they send it over to the local church so that then you, you'll be the person that goes and, 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 and follows up on that. So that's a neat way of getting, uh, finding interest for Bible studies. And I think this right here is probably the most important one right here, friends, is sensitive to your surroundings. I'm not sure if you guys have ever seen this book called Experiencing God by Blackaby. It's actually a workbook and the, the big motto, it's question, answer, Bible, question, answer, Bible, testimonies. And it's, it's like a workbook that um, I've grown to appreciate. And what I love about, what I love about it is he, the, the, the main thing that he's teaching through this workbook is the fact that, um, that there's no better method of finding interest than to actually joining where God is already working. And for that, I know we only have a few minutes left, but for that, I want to take you to John chapter 5, verse 17, and then 19 and 20. And I want to show you exactly what he was meaning uh, through this workbook. And if you don't have that workbook, and if you want to be learn how to be more sensitive to what's going on around you, I want to encourage you to get the workbook. There's also a book, but get the workbook because you actually cross this a little better when you're, when you're dialoguing with the book. Um, it's called Experiencing God by Henry Blackaby. I'll put it in the chat as soon as I'm done so that you guys can have it. But in John chapter 5, verse 17, it says this. Therefore, Jesus answered and was saying to them, truly, truly, I say to you, the son can do nothing of himself unless it is, some, unless it is something he sees the father doing. For whatever the father does, these things the son also does in like manner. For the father loves the son and shows him all the things that he himself is doing. And the father will show him greater works than these so that you will marvel. So my question to you, uh, this is our, our last slide that we're going to look at as we're wrapping up the introduction of why share our faith. My question to you is simple, and I do want to dialogue with you a little bit. But when you read these verses here on the screen, um, what, do you, what type of relationship do you see with Jesus and his father in terms of, in terms of doing, uh, doing mission work, in terms of being a witness? Uh, who would like to be the first to share? You could just unmute yourself and you can share a little bit. 
And, and of course, the verses on the screen. So if you need time to reread them, I encourage you to reread them. But I just encourage you to take yourself off of mute and just share with me what kind of relationship do you see with Jesus and the Father in these verses? Well, they're very close, and Jesus is very obedient to his father, and the father um, is in command. Thank you. Thank you so much. Very close, and Jesus is very obedient to the father and in command. Uh, would anyone else like to share? Um, they're very similar in the way they would respond to situations. Oh, yeah, yeah, very similar. And and Matthew, if I can just piggyback off of that, um, why do you think it was similar? Hmm. I think maybe, well, there there is an agreement as to, like, what is... What is good? Uh -huh. Uh -huh. I think like there's that thing, but you know, I, I I do wonder like in terms of like personality, if if yeah. they're a little bit different, um, mm -hmm. there's some type of individuality between them. But I I for sure would do believe that they have the same values. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Thank you, thank you for sharing, Matthew. Anybody else? Thank you, Bond. Thank you, Matthew. Anybody else? What kind of relationship do you see through these verses specifically, 17, 18, 19, and 20? Uh, what kind of relationship do you see that, the, that Jesus and the Father share? What kind of relationship? Um, also, the Father doesn't do anything secretly. He lets the Son know. Anybody else? We have just a couple of minutes left. Anybody else? They're so in tune with each other. They're so there's, in tune with each other. Yeah, there's this connection that not only obedience, but God, Christ is just literally doing exactly copying what the Father is doing, that he sees the Father doing. Thank you. Thank you, Pastor Kevin. I want to share something with you guys. We just went through a whole presentation as to why share our faith in, in this short seminar of making friends for eternity. We saw that it's God's command. God commands us to, to share our faith, right? Uh, we, we, learned, um, we learned also that, that um, you gain more than we give, right? When you, when you share something, you're the one benefiting also from it. And then we also learned that we learn best when we share. But if there's anything that I would like for you guys to just think about this week before we come back and we get into a more practical exercise, I want you to think about this last thought that I'm going to leave with you. And this last thought is this. According to these verses, the reason why Jesus was so successful at what he did was because he only did what he saw the Father doing. I want you to think about that. The reason why he was so successful at what he did is because he only did what he saw the Father doing. Because the Father would reveal to Jesus what he was doing, and Jesus would go and accomplish that. It was never birthed alone. And this whole concept of soul winning and evangelism, I want to give you the good news that God never intended for you to do it alone. I want us to get into the habit of praying the prayer daily and saying, God, show me where you're working today so that I can join you in what you're doing. 
that book that I showed that I shared with you, Experiencing God by Henry Blackaby, really taught me that. Maybe uh, Pastor Kevin, you could put that in the chat. Experiencing God by Henry Blackaby. It really taught me the importance of working where God is working, of working, being sensitive to what he's already doing. Friends, I want to share with you that God loves humans and he's already at work. Doesn't that take away the, the, the pressure off of you? It just takes pressure off of you. It's not on you. It's not on Marco's shoulders. It's on his shoulders. And all I am doing is asking God to invite me into the process. You want to know how that actually looks like? I'll give you one testimony that really exemplifies this, and we're, we're going to close with prayer. I was looking for a Toyota 4Runner, third generation. My wife and I needed a SUV, and I wanted a Toyota 4Runner. 1996 to 2002, we liked that particular model. And we were looking on Craigslist and OfferUp everywhere. We were looking for uh, this Toyota 4Runner, and we saw eight of them before I bought one. But before I bought a 4Runner, we saw another one, and it was in Long Beach, California. I live in Tahunga. You can't get any more north and south than that. Very, very southern point, and I, I lived right next to the San Angeles Forest. And we went and we went to go see this forerunner. It was an hour and 20 minutes one way because of traffic. And we, we saw the forerunner and we, we were about to test drive it. And I noticed uh, that something did not add up right when I ran it through Carfax. Get Carfax when you're buying a used car, folks. Something did not look right on Carfax. And the gentleman who was selling the truck was selling it for his brother. So it wasn't even his. But in our interactions with him, we told him uh, that we weren't going to be, uh, we didn't, we weren't going to be pursuing that truck, but we thanked him for his time. But in our little interaction with him, he had told us that his brother is completely paralyzed now because of an accident. And that's why he wants to sell the truck. So as we were about to leave. My wife says, what is your brother's name? We want to pray for him because of this accident that he had. And he tells us his name. And I feel impressed to not just pray for him when we left, but to pray for him right there and then. So I told Raymond, I said, Raymond, before we leave, can we pray for your brother with you? Raymond said, uh, okay. Okay. So right there in the driveway, before we left, we prayed for his brother, and then we left. Remember, hour and 20 minutes one way. If anyone else gets annoyed by traffic like I do, then you know why I'm repeating. It was an hour and 20 minutes one way. We get home, an hour and 20 minutes back up north with no truck. We get home, and when I get home, I have a message on the app offer up where I found Raymond. And when I read the message, he says, when you and your wife walked up, I felt that you were good people. I knew that somehow, some way you were connected to God. And I just want to tell you that I need God. I wrote back and I said, I would love to talk with you. If you have the opportunity, he texts me back and says, here's my phone number. And I called him and he tells me his story. He had just gotten out of prison for doing 25 years. And now that he's out of prison, he realizes that he needs something to drastically change him. And he recognizes his deep need of God. And right there and then I realized that I did not drive almost three hours that afternoon to see a forerunner, but that God led us to Long Beach, California, simply to
to meet Raymond. The father is always at work. Will you invite him into your life daily so that he can then invite you into the mission field? That's my encouragement. As we close next week, we're going to be looking at how to make friends in less than five minutes. We're also going to be looking at how to give a simple Bible study. And now that we're not strangers anymore and we're friends, I hope that there's more dialogue next time, especially because it's going to be a lot more practical. I'm going to be asking a lot more questions. Uh, but we're not strangers anymore. Now we're friends. So with that being said, um, I want to just pray. I want to pray that prayer for myself, too. I want to pray that prayer with us. Because the Father is always at work, and we won't find failure if we just join him where he's working. Let's pray. Father in heaven, thank you for this opportunity to be able to meet with you and hang out with you. Lord, we want to lift up Raymond as I'm thinking about him right now, that your Holy Spirit would lead him, would bless him, would guide him, and would connect us once again. I pray, Father, that all of us here on this call would have our open hearts to you. Lord, we believe that you're always at work. And all we want to do is just join you. Lord, help us. Thank you uh, for inviting us into a loving relationship with you. And thank you for giving us the burden, as Bond said, uh, to want to share you with others. In Jesus' name, we love you. Amen. Thank you so much, uh, Marco. We truly appreciate all that you shared today. Just giving us, just giving us a taste of, you know, um, how to share and... Uh, making us excited for our next time next week. Um, everybody that's on here, it's the same link that we use today. I will send out an email to our church. Pastor Tim will send out a reminder email to you guys as well. Please feel free to send this to your friends and family. Um, they're, they're welcome to join us on this uh, open, uh, open training. And we're so blessed to have Marco here uh, sharing his faith, his testimony with us. Um, I don't know if you have a little bit of time. I'm not sure if people have maybe any other questions. As you guys know, we're going to be talking about the practical next week. So maybe not on practical, but maybe other questions that you might have from Marco. Um, if he has time, we can go ahead and just open it up. I'm going to go ahead and stop the recording, but let's go ahead and feel free if you have any questions. Otherwise, uh, yeah.